today we're heading to Kamakura and Enoshima. It's my favorite day trip from Tokyo and only about an hour away from Shinjuku. If you're traveling from Tokyo, I highly recommend getting the Kamakura and Oshima Day Pass from Odaku Railway so that you can hop on and off the train throughout the day. Kamakura and Oshima is connected by the Enoden Line. It's a cute little electric railway that runs along the coast of Sagami Bay so you get the perfect view of the ocean and full access to all the historic landmarks and scenery in the area. It's such a scenic and beautiful train ride which is one of the reasons why I love coming here. Aside from the historic temples and landmarks, Kamakura is known for its many cafes and restaurants so our first stop of the day was Kirara which is known for their big chewy shiratama mitsus. As a mochi lover, this was absolute heaven. We got the traditional ice cream shiratama amitsu and the uji matcha ice cream amitsu. Each bowl comes with agar jelly and other toppings and both were fabulous, but I personally love the traditional one best. This spot is really popular with locals and tourists alike, so I recommend coming early to avoid waiting in long lines. And it's not a visit to Kamakura without a visit to one of their many temples and shrines, so we went to the Zenierai Denten Shrine. Legend says that if you wash your money in the shrine's holy spring water, your money will double, so of course we had to do that. We first paid our respects with the provided incense and candles before heading over to the area where you wash your money. I decided to wash both Japanese yen and US dollar because if my money is going to double, it's probably smart to have it in US dollar. But Japanese yens also have more zeros on the bill, so just in case, I'm covering all my bases here. There are pouches you can purchase to hold your wash bills, but you can also keep it in your wallet. This temple also has water only kujis, which tells you your fortune. After picking your kuji, you bring it over to the dragon fountain to place your kuji in the water to reveal your fortune. This was mine. Unfortunately, my fortune was a little iffy, so I decided to tie it away. If you ever get a bad fortune at a Japanese shrine, you can tie your kuji and hopefully the bad luck is left behind. After the temple, we started walking back towards the main Kamakura shopping street to grab some lunch. This is where all of the main cafes and restaurants are located. There's also a lot of different souvenir shops and pet cafes. We stumbled upon these three bodangos, so we decided to get some since there were a lot of people waiting in line for them. We weren't really a fan of the flavors, but the dangos were really soft and chewy. For lunch, we headed over to Oxymoron. This cute little cafe is really unique because the curry is a fusion between Japanese and South Asian style curry, so you wouldn't really find this type of curry anywhere else. We tried the soboro curry and Japanese style dry curry. Both were absolutely incredible. If you love curry, this has to be on your list. Since it's winter, the sun sets much earlier in the day, so we decided to quickly hop back onto the train to our highlight of their trip. But on our way there, we made a quick pit stop at Hase Station. This is the station where a lot of people get off to visit the Big Buddha, but on the other side of the train station is a cute little residential street that connects to the beach. It's the perfect place for a photo op. Just make sure to be as quiet and respectful as you can since this is a residential area. Alright, on to our main destination the Kamakura Kokomae Station. If you're a Stamp Dunk fan, you probably already recognize this place because it's literally in the anime opening. But even if you're not an anime fan, I feel like we can all appreciate this view because it's just perfect. Make sure to walk out to the beach because you just might get a glimpse of Mount Fuji. After we got our photos, we hopped back onto the train to Enoshima. It's only two stops away and it connects to the Enoshima Island. They're having their annual winter illumination through mid-February and we saw ads on the train so we decided to pay a visit. Enoshima Island itself has lots of attractions worth exploring if you have the time. We unfortunately did not, we just got to walk through the main shopping street on our way to the illumination festival. And let me just say, by this time we walked a lot. And going to the illumination was honestly a last minute decision. We really didn't do any research on it and so when we were greeted with this huge staircase at the end of the shopping streets, you best believe our legs were quivering in fear. But thank god for technology because they built paid escalators right around the corner for about $15 which includes entrance to illumination. So what would have been 20 minutes worth of stairs quickly became a 5 minute escalator ride. There's a total of 4 escalators and there are pit stops and temples at the end of each escalator. This temple had this lucky ring portal thing that's meant to bless you with good health if you walk through it, so of course we had to do it. Good health is one of the best blessings you can get. 
I was in awe when we finally reached the top of the Illumination Festival. It's where the lighthouse is, and honestly, Japan takes Illumination Light Festivals to another level. I can't even imagine the amount of details and time it would have taken to set everything up. There's also an observatory up top at the lighthouse, and it's just overall a really nice area to sit and relax, especially if you hiked all the way up here. We got some churros and continue to explore the rest of the illumination before heading back to Shinjuku. Yes, this is the Enoshima Station. Isn't it so cool? It was such a fun and fulfilling day. If you're looking for a quick day trip from Tokyo, definitely consider Kamakura. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more travel and Japan content. Thanks for watching!